standard deviation and variance. I like this one here, if you've ever seen the show Futurama, your sample sizes are small, your standard deviations are high, and your conclusion means nothing. <laughs> All right, so what we're doing, we've been looking at dispersion or spread of the data. Um, at least that's the idea here. And the interquartile range was actually a measure of the spread of the data. But we've got a really good one called standard deviation. That really does tell you how far different values are from the mean. So uh, we use this. Let me just show you something. Um, I'm especially going to be showing you something called a normal distribution. We're going to be having lots of uh, videos about that later. Well, maybe not lots, but a few at least. Something that's normal distribution, let's just say. Something that's normal distribution. That would mean that if this right here is your x value and this right here is your frequency, the distribution would go something like this. And this right here, this middle right here, that would be your mean. We have something called standard deviation. So the notation that we tend to use for it, we use something called sigma. This is actually the notation we tend to use here. So that's going to be the important one right here. Maybe we'll put a box around it. Notation, sigma. That's what we use for standard deviation. Now on your calculator, your calculator uses two things. It uses sx and it also uses sigma. And we're going to use sigma. Okay, And that's because um, here, let's see, pro tip, we should use sigma because sigma is for uh, population. Um, this SX is actually for a sample. And uh, in ESSA, we consider everything to be uh, populations, which makes it a lot easier for us. So that's why we're going to use this sigma, not SX. In HL, you might want to distinguish between them, but in SL, we just keep sigma. So what does this mean, this sigma? What is that? Let me show you what it looks like on this diagram here. So right now, um, if you know about calculus, it's where the uh, where this graph starts curving downwards, then it starts curving upwards again, at least the concavity. Uh, it's called the second derivative. So it's here and here is actually where it sort of flips. Here it's, it looks here, it's opening sort of downwards. Here it's opening kind of upwards. This place right here, this right here is called uh, mu plus sigma. Over here then is mu minus sigma. Just to try to show you this right here is your standard deviation. It tells you something about the spread. So let me show you an example of this. What if I had something like, so I'll show you two different situations maybe. Let's assume the mean is the same. So I'll do something that has a very, very small spread of the data. So something like this right here, as opposed to maybe something like this. I'm trying to make, you know, the mean sort of the same height here, the same frequency. This right here is the mean. This right here is the mean here. Okay. However, this one right here, I would say the key thing is this one right here, I would say this one is sigma equals small. So that means there's a very small standard deviation. So you notice everything is sort of really pretty close to the mean. Whereas here, the values are quite far from the mean. Do you notice that? Like they're, it's like, although the average might be the same, I could stack these on top of each other. Maybe the average number is the same, but this one is way more spread out. So we'd say this is large. Okay, so this is, you know, sigma here is large. So the spread of the data, this standard deviation really tells you how useful the mean is. Because if you have an average, but the values are way far from the average, then you probably shouldn't use that average. It's not so important. You know, it may not be useful for predicting. That's just why they said, see, your standard deviations are high. See, that just tells you it's not so useful. Now you can sort of get the joke. All right. So pro tip, uh, your calculator is one var stats. It'll tell you the standard deviation. Now, there is a formal definition for it. Um, it's not really needed for SL, but I think it's a good idea to show you anyway, because you might actually want to use this for, I don't know, your internal assessment, maybe, your IA, because uh, you could actually find the standard deviation by hand, which is actually kind of useful here. So we have, uh, let's see, it'll start off at 1, go up to K, I think it is, yeah, times all the frequencies, times all the X values, minus the mean squared all that over n. So what does this really tell you? This is, uh, if I look at this one here, at least x minus mu, this is how far, how far away, maybe I'll say, the values are from the mean. 
So really, they're, they're here, they're saying, here, take a value, take any given value, and then see how far it is from the mean. Of course, you have to do the sum of all those. You have to square it, obviously, if multiplied by the frequency, to the sum of all those, divided by the number, take the square root, and there you go. So this is not something that's on your formula booklet, um, not for SL at least, but it could be useful. Because what if in an IA, you actually go ahead and find out, here is each X value. You know, you got a blah, 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 you got a whole bunch of X's here. And then you got the frequencies. Do, 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 do. You know, you can have a column like this, maybe use Excel or Google Sheets or something like that, right? Well, then you could say, ah, you could also find, uh, by the way, you could find the mean here. So you could actually go ahead and calculate, you know, what's the mean, okay? Well, then you can make a column here called, you know, X minus the mean, you know, and you can figure out, that means it's going to be this minus this. So maybe you can figure out that column. And then you would do another column called, you know, x minus the mean, but this time squared. Do you see that's what you're doing here? Do that column. Maybe you do um, f times x minus mu squared. Do you see what I'm doing now? I'm just building this thing here. You have a whole bunch of them. Now I'm supposed to do the sum. So notice this right here. I'll do the sum here. That's the sum that I would do. And now what I would do then is, of course, uh, let's say I would take that value right there. Maybe this is a little bit complicated, but let's just say I take that sum. Maybe I get some number x. Let's just say I get some number x. Well, then I'll keep in mind, I've just found what this is. I've added up all this. I found this number. Well, then I would just take x. I would divide it by n, and I would just take the square root, and that would be the answer. You see what I would do here? So that's 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 kind of how you can do it with a spreadsheet. So you could do this kind of by hand really easily with Excel. It's actually super fast to do. Um, all right, we got something called the variance. It's just the square of a standard deviation. So that means we could just say the variance is just this. So variance, you will write like this. So variance equals it's just standard deviation squared. That's it. So that's kind of nice. You just got to know that. By the way, I like this one here. I think it's some cyanide and happiness this one here. Look at this. Study finds that 50% of people are bored by statistics. <laughs> I guess we know which is the 50%. All right, well, the formal equation, well, it's just like this one, except we take away the square root. You see that? So this one here is going to be the same idea. All right, we've got the variance here, which is going to be, let's see here. Well, I'll let it do it. I had it in black right here. I wrote it like this. So I'll say, all right, fine. The variance then. Variance, which is equal to sigma squared, just going to be, well, we were doing the sum from i equals 1 to k of each fi times each xi minus mu, so all that squared, all that divided by n. Keep in mind, we had it square rooted for sigma, so now it's squared, it's just like this. That's the variance. So it's just sigma squared. That's like the, the key thing we really needed here from this. Oops, maybe I'll make it a little bit taller. There we go. But a pro tip, if you do want to find the variance, by the way, because your, your calculator will tell you the standard deviation. It won't tell you the variance, but just take the standard deviation and square it, and then you get your variance. So that's actually pretty easy. All right, so the more important thing to do, or maybe not more important, but just as important, is what happens to the, let's see here, the mean. Remember what that is. That's the symbol here. That's mean, standard deviation, and variance if we make changes to the data. So what if we add or subtract something or multiply and divide? So let's use an example here. I have some data set and I calculate the mean. I found the standard deviation. I found the variance. Okay, let's assume I found those. Well, what if you take every single number in that and you add four to it? So you got to try to think like what will happen to the values here? So that means every single data point now, let's assume it was normally distributed before like this right here, like this. And now everything is shifted to the right. So maybe now everything looks just like it, except every single point has been moved to the right. So everything's been moved to the right. So maybe now it looks like this. Okay. So now everything here has moved over. Every single data point moved to the right. Okay. So let's just assume we've done that. So now I've gone to the right, let's say by four. What will happen to the mean? Does it make sense that the average will also move to the right by four? So I'll say the mean will also just be plus four. How about the standard deviation? Well, remember what the standard deviation is. I mean, the standard deviation is um, a spread of the data. Do you notice, although all the data moved to the right, it's not actually changed. So see, I can say this right here. I'll say it's unchanged since the spread, right, that's the whole idea here, that the spread of the data is the same. 
So actually, that's kind of important. The, so the standard deviation doesn't change. And the variance is just sigma squared, so it's also unchanged. Okay, and why? Well, that's because sigma is unchanged. So if you have something that's unchanged, squaring it also is unchanged. So there we go. What if I doubled the value? So what if I took everything and I multiplied them by 2 this time? Every single thing multiplies by 2. Let's see if we can make sense out of this. So let's say I have some uh, starting value right here. So I got, whoa, that's a really bad straight line. <laughs> something like this right here, something that look like this right here. Everything gets multiplied by 2. Well, the interesting thing is that that will end up pushing everything. I mean, it depends where your mean is, right? But I mean, let's just say your, your mean is, I don't know, right there. What will happen is your mean, of course, will also go times 2. Hopefully that'll make sense. Your, your average then will also be double as high. So that'll go times 2, times 2. But your standard deviation here, now if everything gets multiplied by 2, well, the distance from the mean, does it make sense, will also get multiplied by 2? I don't know if that made any sense. But this one here will be, uh, you know, it gets, gets further from the mean. Further from the mean. That's because these values are actually going to go, although they're going to move over, so let's say this is your new one maybe like this here, it's also going to spread it out, so it's going to make it go like way, I don't know if this is some number, this will be double it, these will also go further out. So these will get spread out, so that's why it's times 2. Well, uh, the variance, since the variance is the sigma squared, does it make sense? It'll be 2 to the power of 2, which is times 4. That's because it's sigma squared. So you just got to remember what the variance is. So mean, standard deviation, variance. Maybe we can systematize this. I thought I would sort of write it as a pro tip to remind you then what happens. So if you have some sort of data, maybe I'll write it like this, data plus or minus some n value, what will happen? You're going to have sigma being plus or minus n was. So whatever, if you had like add 5, it's going to be plus 5. If you subtracted 8, it'll be minus 8. But sigma will be unchanged. That's your standard deviation. And your variance will also be unchanged since sigma is unchanged. So this is in general, this is how it'll work. That's if you have data plus or minus n. Now, if you have something like mm, data times n, maybe we'll do it that way. So I'll say data times n. Okay, what happens then? So just to make sure we have this. I'll just write it all out like this so you can see it hopefully clearly. Well, mean is going to be times n as well. And sigma is also going to be times n. And sigma squared then will be times n squared. This is your sort of trick for all these different things, right? So this is, I think, a more general one. So let's take a look if this will work here. So we have the following data set showing the number of flowers on each rose bush. So you have a whole bunch of different rose bushes, and you're counting up how many flowers are on the rose bushes. So you got da -da 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 -da, a whole bunch of data. Find the mean, standard deviation, and variance. So what are those symbols? Remember, that's going to be mean, standard deviation, and variance. Well, we're going to put this into our calculator and do it. So let me go ahead and put it into a list. Uh, I better call this, I don't know, flowers, maybe I'll say. Yeah, maybe I'll just say F L O W E R. There you go, flowers. So I just got to very boringly put in all this into my list here. So two, five, nine. Luckily, I'll only have to do this once. Uh, four, 12, 7, 8, 11, 9. Three, seven, this is boring, four, twelve, it's always boring to watch someone else just input data into the calculator. Sorry, you'll just have to wait for a second here, I'll be done soon. Ten, nine, six, nine, and four. Phew! All right, so what do I do from here? I go into menu, I do stats. And I do give me some calculations. Give me one variable statistics. I have one list. What do I want as my X list? I'll use I'll use my right arrow here and say flower. I'll say go. It's going to give me all the stuff that I needed, I hope. So let's just see if I can find it here. So let's go up here. Whee! All right, so what did I need? I needed the mean. The mean is 7. Does that make sense? 
So now I know the mean equals seven. Good. What's the standard deviation and what's the standard deviation squared? Because that's the variance. So let's just look up those values. So I just scroll down a little bit doo -doo -doo -doo, and I find sigma here. Oh, it's 2.98 approximately. 2.98. Great. Then I'm going to take my 2.98 and square it. If that makes sense. So I'll go down here. And so, all right, well, 2.9839, let's just say. I'll get out of here. So I'll say 2.9. Eight three two nine. So I'll add a new page. See two point nine eight three two nine, and I'll square it, and I get something like eight point nine. Let's just say. Okay, so this is approximately what I'm getting here. There we go. So hopefully you'll see that wasn't really so so bad. Now the interesting part is the number of flowers in each row is doubled. What you could do, you could make a new table with all this right here doubled. What I'm trying to show you is you don't have to do it that way. All you have to do is say, ah, I'm going to use this trick up here. My thing by doubled means I take all the data and I multiply it by 2. If I do that, now I know what all my things will be. Look, I know that my mean will be times 2. So that means then my mean will be, well, 7 times 2, which is going to be 14. So that'll be kind of easy. There we go. Maybe I'll do that uh, later like this. Um, I've got my sigma. My sigma will also be times 2. So whatever that was, so 2.98, well, that'll be times 2. right? So sigma will be, I'll just do it on my calculator here. So that number right there, whoops. So 2.98329. I don't have all the decimals, but that's all right. Uh, times 2. So that'll be about 5.97, let's just say. So 5.97. In other words, roughly doubled. But what happens to my sigma squared? Right, that's going to be my variance. It's going to be times 2 squared, which is times 4. So that means my sigma squared then will be just this number right here. Whoops, sorry, this original number times 4. So it's going to be the sigma value that I had, which was 8.90, and I'm going to do that times 4. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to take my value right here. Let's see. I need my sigma. Where was my sigma? My sigma was 8.90, so I'll go back up and grab that one right there. I'll say that one right there times 4. So then I get 35.6, so I'll say approximately 30, whoops, 35.6. I made a really bad 5 there because of the dot. 35.6 approximately. There we go. There's all my different values here, right? So there's my new mean. There's my new standard deviation and my new variance. So hopefully you can see that's how we can use them. Now, when might this be important? Well, the spread of the data really tells you how important the mean is. So, you know, if, if something has a really big standard deviation, then maybe the mean isn't that useful. If it's a smaller de standard deviation, it tells you that the mean is maybe more useful for prediction. That's at least just one of the things you can do with it. I hope that helps.